Dr. Rinku, you can start with the introduction. Okay. Dr. Vishal, are you with us? You can uh, turn on your camera and microphone and uh, start sharing your screen, Dr. Vishal. Okay, sir. Thanks. Okay. A uh, very good afternoon to all of you. So today is the 11th day and the 19th lecture of the training program. And it's a privilege uh, for us to have Dr. Vishal Chandar, who is a senior scientist uh, in the cadre of ICR Ivera Izzat Nagar, who, who will be delivering a lecture on the emerging transboundary livestock diseases, threats and implications. So I would like to give a brief uh, biodata about uh, Dr. Vishal Chandar. Uh, he completed his BVSC and AH from Dr. G. C. Negi College of Veterinary and Animal Sciences, CSK HPKV Palampur, and he did his Masters and PhD from Deemed University, ICR IVRI Izatnagar. He joined as a scientist in the Virology Laboratory in Center for Animal Disease Research and Diagnosis, that is the CADRAD, and uh, he is pursuing work in the area of surveillance, epidemiology, and diagnosis of different viral diseases of livestock, companion, and wild animals. Dr. Chandra's research interest is in the area of infectious diseases of animals and has focused on development of diagnostics, vaccines, and therapeutics against different viral pathogens of animals. He is presently working on improving canine vaccines and understanding the events of pathogenesis of different infectious diseases. The main emphasis of the work has been regarding the molecular epidemiology of various viral pathogens. And he is currently the PI of a project and co-PI in two projects. And he has been the recipient of Young Scientist Award and conferred Best Oral Presentation and Poster Awards at various national and international conferences and symposia. Other than that, uh, I would like to mention here that Dr. Vishal Chandar, he has been a COVID warrior and uh, uh, he has been involved in uh, the RT-PCR testing, which was uh, being done at ICR Ivera Izzatnagar. And uh, he is a, a great uh, dynamic and uh, silent worker at the same time. And uh, we are very happy to have him here. And uh, I am confident that uh, all the participants, particularly from the health side and otherwise, they would definitely benefit from his presentation. Dr. Vishal, you are most welcome, and please go ahead with your presentation. Thank you, Thank you very much, Dr. Rinko, uh, for uh, this uh, kind uh, invitation. Uh, and I congratulate on my behalf uh, to all of your team uh, for successfully uh, organizing this and inviting me uh, for this lecture. Uh, so should I start now? Yes, Dr. Vishal, please. Thank, thank you. Sir. Uh, is my screen uh, visible to all? Yes, it is visible. Okay, thank you. Thank, thank you very much. Uh, so, friends, a very good afternoon to all of you. Uh, I had been assigned the topic on emerging transformatory livestock diseases, uh, basically the threat and implications, uh, and also the status, uh, especially uh, with relevance uh, to India. So uh, we'll be discussing about a few very, very important diseases uh, which has been happening uh, in India. And you can say uh, already uh, globally we are fighting with COVID-19 pandemic. And there are other diseases, the animal diseases, the animal pandemics, which are going along with the, the COVID-19 pandemic. So because COVID-19 had uh, uh, overtaken uh, majority of uh, these uh, infections, but uh, silently, uh, many countries, they are being reported uh, through different uh, infectious diseases uh, pertaining to the livestock, uh, especially in case of, you can say, cattle and pigs. Uh, the few diseases which we'll be discussing uh, includes the basically lumpy skin uh, disease, uh, African swine fever, uh, the malignant catarrhal fever, and the uh, porcine sarcovirus. So uh, basically, uh, if we uh, come to the term of transboundary animal diseases, so basically we can say that boundary uh, restricts uh, basically human beings from entering uh, here and there. But for, uh, we can say, uh, majority of the animals, including livestock uh, and also wild animals, uh, birds, 
usually there are no boundaries so they have uh, you can say fair movement uh, especially in a country like india where majority of the borders are not uh, properly sealed and many a times it has been observed that many diseases uh, which do occur uh, in the neighboring countries uh, do uh, occur uh, in india over a period of time so basically uh, due to the movement of animals uh, and uh, of course uh, human activities uh, like bringing uh, animals from different places uh, from different countries that that to impose a threat so uh, we can say uh, if we uh, define these transboundary diseases so they are basically highly transmissible and contagious endemic diseases uh, which have the potential to spread very fast uh, globally and are likely to cause uh, you can say social economic and public health significances so uh, there are uh, different diseases uh, which and which have been uh, you can say included uh, in these transboundary diseases which include basically your uh, lung skin disease in cattle uh, it is classical swine fever african swine fever foot and mouth disease uh, pestidis hepatitis pneumoniae sheep and goat pox uh, Uh, CCPP and brucellosis uh, amongst the different diseases. So uh, uh, I'm sure you must be knowing about uh, about most of the diseases. Uh, but my my basic uh, you can say intention uh, through uh, this uh, presentation is to apprise uh, you all about the different diseases which are uh, livestock diseases which are prevailing uh, currently uh, globally uh, and have a potential threat in India also. so we won't be discussing all of the diseases uh, but we'll be discussing only few of them uh, so just to uh, you can uh, give you a, a sort of uh, uh, appreciation and so that you could be aware of uh, the these diseases uh, that that, that uh, they are causing the potential uh, threat uh, to both you can say uh, agriculture economy uh, and of course uh, livestock health so uh, we'll be discussing uh, mainly about the lump skin disease the african swine fever malignant catarrhal fever or signs of viruses actually i have enlisted uh, these diseases because uh, they have been uh, causing a potential threat uh, over a few years last few years and also we uh, too have encountered these these diseases uh, in the field so many a time uh, in the initial phase we couldn't uh, diagnose about the disease uh, so uh, with time uh, we have we have come to know and we could diagnose and even isolate uh, the viruses uh, at our labs so it has been uh, quite potential threat and we have been uh, you can say uh, encountering uh, these diseases in different states uh, simultaneously so uh, uh, one thing i'll uh, uh, take your note here that uh, we have a world animal health information system uh, it is basically uh, linked uh, to the oi site so uh, oi uh, basically it you can say uh, updates uh, the different outbreak information uh, of uh, different diseases in, in different countries uh, so this was uh, uh, you can say uh, uh, two days back i have taken this and you can see that the different diseases uh, which includes the african swine fever the lump skin disease the even influenza actually uh, uh, this year we have observed that uh, all the diseases have basically occurred throughout the year uh, like uh, in case of even influenza it used to occur only seasonally uh, when the migratory birds used to come but this year uh, it has been uh, changed and a uh, few days back only we have encountered one case of five and one also in case of there are the two which could be notified soon so uh, we can say that uh, it is not uh, like climatically uh, because it can be that climate has uh, the global warming has uh, and the human activities basically they have changed the whole uh, earth scenario and they have predisposed uh, both the human and livestock health to different diseases the spread of the diseases has uh, have been uh, relatively fast and because there is an intensification and we require Uh, most of uh, you can say uh, higher uh, productive uh, income through uh, agriculture and uh, livestock so that pressure also has played to uh, different diseases and uh, threats so of course uh, this is uh, showing uh, different diseases and of uh, about 23 they are uh, showing in uh, basically they were the diseases including the lst and the asf were included in uh, nepal and presently not in india 
and uh, one uh, site i'd like to uh, make you aware of this government mail so this uh, is you can say is it's a site it collects uh, information about uh, different diseases occurring in any you can say uh, living being being uh, it's human or animal or plant so uh, it, the covid 19 also uh, was also reported by the government made in first time when it was a suspicious viral fever uh, which was going out uh, in wuhan in china after that uh, further investigation uh, lead uh, led to an confirmation of covid 19 and sars cov 2 so here we can see that uh, different diseases uh, has been encountered and uh, the most recently uh, in india i have enlisted which includes uh, you can say fmd influenza things and fever has been last reported in uh, 17 july and also 15th june uh, in basically uh, different northeastern states and also we encountered one this covid 19 in case in case of uh, uh, line uh, a fatality has occurred in case of two or three loose and the uh, lump skin disease was reported last year but this year also uh in case of uttarakhand and uh, up we are encountering cases over few months and we have been able to uh, diagnose so uh, coming to a uh, little bit uh, of the information of the disease um, because i won't be going into very much detail of the virology and the pathogenesis uh, but just to make aware uh, of the, the disease and the status of the disease in india so we'll be discussing slightly about this uh, lumpy skin disease so it is a very very infectious viral disease and uh, basically it belongs uh, to the pox viridic family uh, the genus is the capripox so uh, it includes uh, other pox uh, family members also uh, the good thing is that like other uh, pox viruses lsd uh, is still non zoonotic and it has not been reported in case of humans and uh, it has been restricted to mostly you can say ruminants including the cattle and water buffalo Uh, in case of cattle also we can see that uh, the cattle uh, which are indigenous uh, like boss uh, indicus they are mostly it has been observed uh, they are mostly uh, resistant uh, but the cross bred uh, and the other uh, exotic cattle they are highly uh, you can say susceptible animals and of course water buffalo buffalo cases are also being reported the biggest thing is uh, regarding its transmission because it includes the biting size mosquitoes and ticks so we can say uh, as far as uh, the seasonality goes many countries they have reported a different uh, increase uh, rise in cases of uh, these diseases because of uh, these vector basically these uh, insects and also vectors which have been major factor for transmission of disease uh the big thing is that uh, it uh, has a huge uh, you can say scope of morbidity but uh, leads to low mortality uh, only in case of few animals uh, it leads to mortality so basically clinical signs uh, you can uh, sometime confuse uh, with uh, other pox infections because it basically includes the uh, uh, skin lesions so like other diseases it has uh, been noted that there is fever that is lymph nodes swelling and uh, there are skin lesions so over a period of time uh, animals uh, do become uh, you can say a uh, little bit uh, emaciated and there is a huge production loss uh, especially in case of uh, milk and rot power uh, many times it uh, leads to infertility also and it has been a notifiable disease as per oi so uh, different uh, countries they have reported at different time points but it was first reported in zambia in 1929 from there it was uh, uh, you can say spread, it has spread to different african countries and after that uh, uh, different you can say african european and asian countries they have reported so the very very basic uh, cause has been due to the various uh, you can say transmission vectors which have been involved uh, uh, in case of uh, transmission of uh, this uh, disease so here we can see that uh, different uh, clinical signs uh, of lumpy uh, skin disease uh, in cattle so uh, here we can see uh, it is uh, showing different ulceration uh, in eyes also uh, nodular skin uh, and there is the corneal opacity and there are skin nodules covering the whole body 
and uh, we can see that uh, almost uh, throughout the body the skin lesions uh, can occur in case of uh, LSD. So uh, if we talk of the transmission, uh, transmission is the very very basic uh, reason for the spread of the disease because uh, it can uh, actually spread either directly or, or indirectly. So mostly uh, directly does not spread as fast uh, in, in, in the absence of uh, vectors it has been observed. Uh, but it occurs uh, due to direct contact or uh, shared or common, uh, we can say, uh, water or feed lots. And uh, in case of vectors, uh, different vectors like tick fly and mosquitoes of different species, they have been involved. And mostly these vectors, uh, they have been uh, uh, like uh, uh, mechanical vectors and not biological vectors. So uh, uh, right from the, uh, you can say, blood sucking to the non-blood sucking uh, insects and uh, arthropods, and they have uh, role to play a big role to play in the transmission and the spread of the disease. So uh, the big thing uh, which we have observed in, uh, in, the, in the case of India that uh, many uh, states uh, did, did not have reported earlier, like in case of uh, Bihar and Uttar Pradesh, uh, in uh, different cattle fair uh, at the border areas of uh, Orissa and West Bengal, when the, the, the movement of these animals uh, basically increased. So uh, it led to actually, uh, you can say, introduction of uh, different infected animals into the susceptible lot. So that also played a huge, uh, you can say, transmissible dynamics and in case of uh, uh, spread of the disease. In, in, so it has been observed uh, like uh, we can see here uh, the different parameters which have been used to estimate the impact of LSD in different scenarios. So we can see that the mortality rate and milk production rate uh, actually basically it, 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 uh, as we have seen that it is basically causing huge mortality. And of course indigenous cattle is uh, relatively you can say uh, more resistance. So the losses uh, compared uh, to you can say indigenous uh, animals uh, compared to the exotic or the prospect uh, is relatively more uh, in case of you can say uh, livestock health also and production also. So uh, different other transmission dynamics which are related to LSD uh, actually uh, when it was reported uh, at around 2019 uh, we were involved uh, in actually uh, detection and diagnosing uh, that disease. Later, we were told uh, that uh, Nesad uh, would take the lead uh, because uh, it is the nodal center for uh, uh, emerging diseases in case of India. So we could diagnose it first time uh, in case of West Bengal in 2019. So because it was not aware that this was the disease which was spreading, so there was a slow disease reporting at the uh, border areas. And people were not aware and not confirmed also that uh, whether this is the LSD or not. But uh, after uh, it was reported in, and confirmed in West Bengal, it moved uh, to the different neighboring states, uh, including uh, Bihar and Odisha and uh, other states. So uh, now, um, uh, quite a large number of states in India they have uh, reported uh, this. Case. So uh, we can say, uh, uh, depending upon the vectors actually, uh, which lead to the transmission of these diseases. Uh, so as long as uh, the vector they can go uh, up to kilometers, uh, this disease uh, can spread rapidly. And of course, the ratio of, you can say, uh, these vectors uh, to the host is uh, uh, positively correlated regarding that transmission. And also, uh, it is seen that uh, uh, there are low rates and efficiency uh, in case of direct contact. And uh, uh, there is a decline in case of cases when the vector population goes less in different regions. But uh, also, it has been observed that uh, even, if, even in the absence of vector, also the disease has uh, spread to a lot of whole lot. So uh, uh, actually, uh, it becomes important that you have to study and you have to correlate epidemiologically as to how the disease is spreading at a particular uh, place at a particular time point. Uh, and you can relate the different causes uh, which are basically related to the spread of the disease. So we have observed that many times it has been the movement uh, of the susceptible animal to the healthy lot. Uh, which has led to the spread of the disease when the vectors were not uh, present in abundance.
and of course uh, common water sources or uh, new animals into a herd lead to the uh, and uh, uh, because the skin regions uh, they are having a good virus uh, titer uh, along with the saliva and nasal swabs so uh, you can say if the animal is positive uh, so it will shed the virus in case of saliva and nasal swab and it will be important uh, that uh, that cause the uh, leads to uh, higher risk of, of uh, infection so as the the, the titer decreases uh, so does the uh, risk of contact transmission and uh, intrauterine transmission has been also documented and uh, through contaminated milk or skin lesions also transmission has been uh, reported so experimentally also through semen it has been seen that the virus is uh, transmitted and uh, in case of uh, semen bovine semen uh, it is detectable up to quite a uh, good number of days so the transmissible ability uh, uh, you can say through uh, semen uh, either through you can say artificial insemination or natural mating it does increase uh, if, a, if a particular animal is infected and uh, uh, the good thing about this disease is that uh, vaccination uh, is uh, prevalent and it is available commercially and uh, we can we have seen that uh, many times uh, homologous vaccines uh, they are the best uh, the immune strain and other also uh, strains like the group box and c box uh, vaccines they have been successful in uh, controlling and uh, inducing immunity in, in case of uh, cattle so uh, very very important is the insect uh, transmission uh, basically it is the mechanical uh, and uh, there is possibility of biological mode but it has to be uh, studied uh, further and we, it has been observed that uh, flies uh, different uh, species of flies uh, like uh, stomoxis and mosquitoes like uh, aedes and uh, uh, ticks like uh, even hartic uh they have been there because these ticks are actually universally or globally present uh, so the transmission uh, chances of this disease uh, increases very much so i am discussing uh, all this so that you could remember that so many are you you know vectors they are involved in transmission uh, transmissibility of uh, this disease uh, both you can say biting and the non biting flies they they, they are uh, basically involved in transmission and of course the house fly uh, is also uh, reported in case of many many outbreaks uh, including the other mosquitoes so like the culex and the enfleas uh, also sand flies uh, they have been reported so uh, it actually uh, depends upon uh, different uh, you can say vectors uh, that can be uh, present uh, in a particular area so uh, maybe uh, the disease where it has not been reported now where it is has been reported if a new vector uh, is uh, present uh, which has not been reported earlier there are chances that it may have a uh, potential to in spreading uh, the disease and different uh, tick species uh, they have been involved uh, in different uh, Uh, transmission uh, of uh, this disease uh, actually all these diseases have been very recently uh, studied and uh, because it this uh, st- uh, disease we have seen that it has spread uh, really spread like a wildfire so the uh, reporting system and the study and the research they all have uh, led to a good amount of data epidemiological investigation they have uh, led uh, to you can say reporting of the new species which have been involved in uh, transmission of this so basically we can uh, say that uh, if we come to diagnosis uh, it is the skin nodules or uh, which are basically present so uh, we can uh, differentially diagnose it with other diseases which causes uh, skin lesions uh, like uh, this uh, lst is includes uh, basically fmd pox or are there any other insect bites or you can say uh, ectoparasites or hypersensitivity uh, but but it has to be confirmed uh, through lab uh, so we can send the sample and uh, we can do for either virus isolation or uh, you can say a molecular diagnosis uh, through pcr uh, or you know genomic dna detection uh, you can say specific for uh, lst virus so the good thing is that uh, we have a vaccine and uh, in addition to that we have to go for the control and management 
so uh, regarding uh, you can say any potential uh, health hazard disease LSD, we have to take the strict biosecurity measures. So you have to uh, typically, uh, you can say, restrict the movement of the animals from one place to another in case of suspected outbreak uh, of this disease at a particular place. Uh, because uh, it has been observed that when this has been stopped, uh, the, the spread of the disease has been, uh, you can say, checked uh, effectively. So uh, the next thing is that the surveillance and the awareness, because uh, people uh, are not uh, very much aware of the disease, uh, as this is the new disease. So they are not aware and they are not also aware that a vaccination uh, is uh, there in place and it is also happening at different states. So this uh, becomes important uh, that the farmers or the stakeholders, they are aware of uh, the disease so that uh, uh, in case uh, if they suspect uh, this disease, uh, it, it could be infected. And it has been observed that a vaccine has played a good role uh, in checking uh, the spread of disease in different uh, regions and countries. So uh, different approaches actually uh, has been seen and uh, it is basically the political and national legis legislation and the state uh, animal has husbandry departments, they have a big role to play in uh, taking the control of disease because many a times uh, different, uh, you can say, uh, fairs and uh, different functions involving the animals or the movement of the animals from one place to another, it has to be checked uh, through, you can say, strict regulations. So that comes into place uh, only after, uh, you can say, uh, uh, organization, these government organization, they, they, they uh, take uh, part. So uh, the best thing is that you prevent the uh, first introduction of the disease. So you have to take different control options and there are, of course, challenges, especially in a country like India, where uh, restrict, restricting such movement at times becomes difficult. So uh, after uh, disease has occurred, then also you have to uh, take care that uh, you, you uh, effectively control and manage uh, so that after, if the animal is infected, it is uh, restricted, uh, the movement is restricted. If it is died, uh, if the carcass disposal, disposal uh, is done effectively so that uh, it is not spread through uh, vectors or through direct uh, contact through animals. So the very important thing is that vector control uh, and uh, animal movement control, it is very, very important in, uh, in at, 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 at every stage. So uh, still actually uh, the disease is spreading in India. So over a period of time only uh, we can say that uh, uh, animals, uh, if uh, they are being taken good care, uh, especially uh, if the vaccination uh, comes in place at the right time, the, the animals uh, may be safe. Otherwise, uh, it is seen that uh, you can say uh, approximately 80% of the morbidity occurs in animals in case of outbreaks, the new outbreaks, because uh, you can say almost all the animals they are susceptible uh, to this. So uh, this is uh, one data uh, which has been documented by FAO for the last uh, year. So we can see different outbreaks uh, they have uh, occur uh, in India. Uh, in different uh, months in case of 2019 and 2020 and uh, now also different states are uh, reporting. So these data have uh, been, you can say, officially also and unofficially also it has been reported that these incidents have almost uh, many of the states. And the major thing is uh, that uh, there are uh, different risk factors uh, which are, uh, you can say, uh, present uh, throughout the India. So the very basic thing is that the whole lot, the whole, uh, you can say, uh, cattle population, including cattle and buffalo, they are susceptible. And uh, there are, you can say, bordering uh, issues uh, with different countries. Uh, they are porous and there is importation and, uh, uh, of course, uh, of animals and animal products and also there is uh, exploitation. And the vectors also, transmissibility uh, issue is there. So uh, these all issues, uh, they have uh, led to, you can say, they, they pose a major risk factor for LSD introduction. Uh, then come to vaccine, we can see that there are different types of vaccines which have a major role to play. 
and in India also one uh, this goat tissue pox vaccine developed at Ayurveda is being used uh, for this uh, effective vaccination program. Uh, most of the studies they uh, correlate that if there is a homologous vaccine like the LSD uh, vaccine used for LSD control it is the best. But uh, in places where it is not present, uh, other vaccines uh, like uh, sheep pox and goat pox, pox vaccine they have been used. So in India currently, uh, this Hester has uh, acquired this uh, vaccine and it is uh, using it in the field. So these are uh, different, uh, we can say, companies uh, commercially available as vaccines and they are using uh, this of a different uh, places. So another uh, very important disease uh, which uh, we'll discuss is the African swine fever. So uh, uh, the good thing which are present in LSD uh, is the best thing is that we have a vaccine. But in case of African swine fever, uh, the sad part is uh, that we don't have any vaccine. Uh, you can say the uh, complex uh, pathogen and of course the role of uh, different vectors. It, it has uh, really uh, you can say paved the way for this potential threat to spread to different countries. So it has been observed that uh, right from the beginning of the outbreaks uh, two years back in case of India. Uh, this is still continuing and thousands of and thousands of states, especially in case of northeastern states of India. They have been toiled and uh, you can say killed uh, to, to, to control the, this disease. Uh, but uh, you can say uh, the virus is uh, such a virus that uh, uh, different studies report that uh, it uh, survives uh, in case of you can say, normal blood uh, for over a month. So the transmissibility uh, in case such a case becomes very, very high. So that is the major cause for the spread of uh, this disease and of course uh, both you can say domestic and feral uh, pigs are susceptible but the domestic pigs are most uh, susceptible and uh, many times wild hogs uh, or you can say wild pigs they basically act as with carriers but uh, it becomes very important that uh, when we don't have any uh, potential vaccine commercial vaccine in the field it is uh, difficult, becoming very difficult to control this disease. So uh, countries are becoming very, uh, you can say, aware. Uh, the spreading awareness is uh, most important in case of uh, this disease. Uh, so that the entry uh, can be prohibited uh, because uh, the virus survives uh, in different uh, materials uh, in period of time. Uh, so, uh, in case of, you can say, uh, in case of international travel also, the food and the feed material and uh, other non-living material, where they are the potential uh, source of uh, carriers, uh, including the, you can say, feeds uh, of the animals, feeds and fodder. So, it was reported early in uh, 1950s, but the majority of the countries are uh, now reporting. So the important thing is that uh, this disease has uh, relatively very high mortality, almost you can say 100%. In case of LSD, we have uh, relatively less. So the few things which includes is the lack of the efficacy specs, the complex make makeup of the variant, and the life cycle of the genome. So it has become uh, difficult uh, to control. Uh, once uh, it has been seen that once it established uh, in the vector, which is the, you can say, takes uh, like the Ornithodorus, it is uh, absolutely difficult to get rid of uh, this pathogen. Uh, Dr. Vishal, can you be a, a tiny bit louder so that uh, at times uh, the compression does uh, yes. Not help. Yes, sir. A bit louder would be helpful. Uh, I mean, sir, uh, finishing fast. No. Sorry? Uh, I didn't get, sir. I'm just saying that can you be a bit louder? Okay, okay, sir. Fine, sir. Fine, sir. Uh, so, this is the schematic presentation of the African swine fever. So, we can see here that uh, basically, in case of domestic pigs, in case of uh, Eurasia, both in case of uh, Europe and Asia, we can see that uh, different uh, animals, uh, basically the domestic uh, pigs, uh, they have been involved. And in case of uh, Africa, because uh, there is a large number of uh, this warthog population, 
so uh, they also spread uh, this but this happens mostly in africa in india also we have seen that uh, wart hogs uh, are uh, prevalent uh, and they are uh, affected with this african swine fever so the most important is this uh, the vector which is involved uh, this ornithodorus species uh, it actually transmits uh, the virus uh, in case of different stages also and vertically also to different generation so the virus lives uh, through generation in the vector host so it becomes a potential uh, vector uh, for uh, spreading the disease and it has been seen that uh, different sources of virus like blood tissues secretion and excretions of sick and dead, dead animals has been uh, observed and in case of different countries uh, recently they have uh, you can say reported uh, over the last few years uh, we can see europe which has been basically uh, reporting these cases uh, due to the uh, wild uh, pig population which has been uh, roaming uh, across the borders in different countries and in case of uh, india also we have seen that when it started uh, in case of different northern eastern eastern states it was observed that many pigs died in the neighboring countries uh, like in case of china and they were thrown, thrown into different rivers so it has been reported that uh, they uh, the dead carcasses which they had come uh, mainly started or initiated the infection in these areas uh, after the initial spread uh, it spread to uh, almost you can say all the states so uh, it has become a potential uh, health hazard in case of uh, north eastern states and because uh, we can say pig uh, is the basic livestock economy in case of all these states uh, uh, including uh, you can say uh, food uh, and the economy so uh, over the last few years here we can see how different uh, countries of uh, both europe and asia they have uh, reported this disease and uh, for, for basically uh, if you want to control uh, this disease we have to see whether these uh, risks are they are analyzed and their critical action points they are implemented so the best thing is that uh, we control the you can say disease uh, at the initial phase because after it has set up and it has uh, involved the vectors it is very difficult to control the disease uh, especially uh, in the scenario when, when we don't have uh, any vaccine so diagnosis uh, is there in place uh, so it is best if we go for diagnosis uh, as early as possible uh, for this disease because mostly it has been observed uh, because the whole population is highly susceptible so there are majority cases of the per acute infection so uh, even in case uh, zero uh, you can say zero conversion or antibody development also does not occur so uh, it becomes difficult uh, to diagnose uh, serologically many a times because uh, death occur uh, within a few days so uh, it is uh, best that we diagnose as early as uh, possible uh, using molecular diagnosis uh, as pcr so uh, lesions we can see uh, different lesions uh, actually this is a systemic disease uh, so uh, almost all the organs uh, they are basically involved and the lesions are present uh, in different uh, you can say organs so uh, if we want to differentiate uh, between the different uh, you can say uh, per acute acute and sub acute and chronic depending upon the in infection time uh, different uh, other clinical sign and gross lesions may may uh, you can say uh, differ so differential diagnosis we have to uh, make with other diseases which cause uh, similar lesions and similar phase of mortality the most common being the classical sign swine fever and also other diseases uh, which may uh, confuse or which may lead to uh, confounding uh, scenario like in case of prs or reciprocal in case of skin infections if, uh, in case of if it occurs and also other bacterial diseases like partialosis and salmonella so uh, different samples which are most important to use the blood uh, spleen and lymph nodes uh, tonsil lungs and kidney and also serum uh, in case of you can say uh, chronic cases uh, we can collect the serum uh, as to diagnose it uh, serologically so uh, the procedure for isolation includes the cell culture isolation and uh, detection of you can say uh, genomic dna through pcr also leads to diagnosis 
diagnosis. So prevention and control is uh, very, very important. Uh, the best thing is that uh, you diagnose it as early as possible and try to uh, implement restriction uh, on, on everything which you suspect could be involved uh, in case of, you can say, transmission of this disease. So it, it has been observed that the countries have become very much aware and they have uh, put a strict, uh, careful import policy. Uh, many times it has been observed that uh, the flights from the outbreak uh, affected countries, uh, their uh, people and their uh, shipments and their uh, these uh, foods and feeds and uh, all these things, they have been checked for the potential you can say a carrier because many times it has been reported that the passengers which have uh, come to the affected area they have uh, spread the disease uh, in, in their uh, regions so the awareness is very very important uh, the best thing is to make aware of uh, all the farmers and the stakeholders so that they become aware and uh, they don't uh, spread the disease so uh, regarding uh, the status in case of India, we can say that uh, almost uh, all the North Asian states uh, they have uh, reported, and because the, uh, there is high mortality, almost 100%, uh, and the rest of the population has to be culled or killed. There has been a huge loss because uh, thousands of pigs, uh, you can say, uh, have been killed in these states. So regarding the confirmation uh, of uh, this uh, swine fever, it was uh, confirmed to be genotype two. Uh, we too could uh, isolate uh, one uh, ASF virus and we could hold genome uh, sequence it. So uh, this is a potential hazard and it has to be taken uh, good care because uh, the, the best thing is that we don't have, uh, the worst thing is that we don't have any uh, vaccine and also the potential spread uh, to the whole susceptible uh, you can say population of pigs, it is very uh, difficult to control. So uh, this is another disease uh, which exactly don't fall under the you can say definition of uh, transboundary animal disease. But we have observed the cases in the field uh, regarding uh, this disease, and it is also uh, slowly you can say emerging and has been reported over the last few years in uh, different states uh, in India. Uh, so uh, basically, uh, malignant catarrhal fever is a you can say fatal disease, and it mainly affects the cattle. And in case of cattle also, indigenous cattle, uh, you can say, is relatively uh, more resistant. But the close blood cattle, uh, like for other diseases, it is more susceptible. So it is basically uh, belongs to the genus Maka virus and uh, family herpes variety. So uh, we are aware that uh, these, uh, actually, these uh, family of viruses, they cause the latent infection. And many times, many uh, species, they have been observed that they are the latent carriers of the disease, alike in case of uh, sheep uh, and uh, goats. So they may not show overt clinical signs and symptoms, uh, but they are uh, basically involved in the uh, spread of the disease to the susceptible cattle population. Uh, actually, we had uh, attended one outbreak a uh, few years back uh, when we could observe that uh, person uh, in, in case of Varanasi, in case of Mirzapur, we had the uh, you can say population of around 110 animals. So when we were told to visit that farm, uh, approximately 60 animals, uh, 60 uh, cattle, horses, and pigeon cows, they have died, and uh, they were suspecting uh, this uh, infectious bovine rhinotracheitis because the symptoms uh, of like this uh, nasal and discharge, it was there. So uh, at first we, we, we couldn't diagnose, but uh, later when we had uh, discussed with other experts, so again we visited and we could, uh, you can say, uh, pinpoint a diagnosis uh, basically involved uh, that was bovine herpes virus too. So it, it has uh, most probably, it was, uh, it has spread from the different sheep because sheep was not pre prevalent in that particular farm, but uh, you can say 100 meters away. So that, that, that is there that because this uh, virus spread uh, through uh, aerosol route, uh, through nasal secretions. And we had collected the uh, blood from sheep also, and we could identify uh, this virus in case of sheep also. So uh, we could say that uh, this was the potential um, source of uh, spread. 
but the uh, bad thing and the uh, you can say the sad thing about uh, the thing is was that the majority of the animals uh, of that farmer has died and presently also we don't have any effective uh, vaccine uh, for this disease so that uh, becomes uh, you can say a very difficult situation in the field when you say uh, that this is the disease but you ca you can't say how to control uh, this effectively because when it has uh, once it has uh, entered in the herd it becomes very difficult to get rid of uh, the population uh, because uh, it was a, a sort of you can say chronic phase of disease when in case of this farmer uh, few animals uh, they were showing over clinical symptoms few uh, they were in the start uh, or in the initial phase and um, almost 50, 60, uh, more than 60 animals they have already uh, died so this uh, person actually this farmer faced a huge huge loss so uh, in case of uh, india we also uh, mostly it is the one herpes virus too actually this is a sheep associated which has been observed in case of uh, i can say different uh, transmission transmission uh, scenario uh, because uh, it is reported to uh, you can say transmit transmit in case of in utero and also susceptible host they are not you can say very much uh, directly uh, contacted but uh, through you can say nasal secretion it, it, it becomes uh, a carrier and over a period of time because it is a life latent uh, infection and in case of cattle they become a dead end host so from them it may not spread but the sheep and goat they become a you can say uh, carrier potential carrier so when they are in the vicinity of uh, you can say large herd uh, which is uh, susceptible so uh, they, the disease can spread so basically it is the inhalation uh, of uh, these viruses as other viruses uh, because uh, we have observed in case of other besides uh, bovines also many other species like uh, uh, caprine and canine uh, and of course in case of human also we have seen that uh, these herpes viruses they cause uh, ocular lesions so also we have observed in case of uh, cattle so this was actually basically outbreak which we have attended so we could see that uh, there was uh, actually it starts with the swelling of the eye so there is a you can say fluid accumulation in the this white sclera so the eye uh, you can say it goes on swelling with this fluid and it goes on swelling uh, up to an extent when it eventually bursts it is quite painful and we can see there is a, a almost continuous uh, you can say mucopurulent discharge so we can see there was discharge from the head also Uh, this animal was affected for the last few months, and it was also showing the signs of uh, neurological signs of you can say continuous shaking, and because the visibility uh, when it was not clear, so uh, the animal becomes frightened uh, if any if anybody uh, approaches this animal. So uh, you can say uh, this is very very uh, typical type of disease uh, if you. Uh, encounter it one and if you see the cases once uh, you you can observe and you can you can say do the snap diagnosis that this could be the malignant cattle fever in case of other species also so actually this was a productive animal and it was uh, sad to see that it has gone uh, you can say it was unable to eat and uh, it had become in inactive over a period of uh, time so the, the diagnosis is important and uh, basically it is the blood and the different tissues and exudates uh, which are basically utilized for uh, you can say uh, diagnostic purpose and the different lesions uh, basically it has been observed in case of epithelial necrosis and erosion and hemorrhages in git uh, gastrointestinal tract and there is a, a you can see profuse cataral and mucopurulent exudate secretions particularly uh, involving the respiratory tract which has been observed so in case of post mortem also uh, different echymotic hemorrhages in case of urinary bladder it has been observed so histological changes and diagnosis also confirmatory uh, because uh, it forms a typical for this malignant cataral fever Uh, due to the epithelial degeneration, respiratory and hyperplasia. 
So differential diagnosis has to be made uh, with the diseases which show uh, almost a similar type of uh, symptoms. So diagnosis is important because uh, another virus, uh, which is alcipeline herpes virus, which is not uh, involved uh, transmission case in India, but in other countries, especially the African countries, it has been observed. Uh, although this virus has been isolated, but uh, the one herpes virus too has not been uh, isolated. So uh, this becomes uh, difficult uh, for you can say a potential vaccine uh, to uh, make and uh, use it uh, in case of uh, cattle. So uh, in case of India, it was first reported in Punjab in 1975 and thereafter in many states and they have reported over a period of time. And different species also they have been uh, encountered as uh, positive uh, for this virus. So uh, regarding the prevention and the control also is to best thing is to uh, you can say remove or separate all the susceptible uh, animals or the carrier animals from the susceptible lot. But uh, at times it becomes difficult also because when we had attended uh, that case we had uh, requested uh, them to tell the people who are uh, you can say having these sheep uh, to let them go anywhere. But when you say to let them go anywhere means they would be carrier to that new place. So at times it dif becomes difficult uh, to uh, basically tell uh, how to uh, check or stop the disease. Uh, especially in case of Indian scenario when you cannot go for mass killing of the animal. Uh, especially uh, you can say uh, in case of uh, poor, poor farmers. So, but there are a few studies which are showing that uh, the commercial vaccines they are being developed and could be helpful in uh, say providing the network. So uh, one uh, last disease we'll discuss uh, which we have encountered in case of a uh, few cases include the porcine sarcovirus. Actually we had uh, encountered uh, the cases when we had thought that uh, it was basically uh, classical swine fever because uh, one of uh, the farm at uh, Agra it was facing a huge mortality in case of especially in case of uh, young pigs. So we thought it would be a classical swine fever but it was not there. So when we have, when we have uh, investigated further we could uh, uh, pinpoint that it was a porcine pers sarcovirus 2 uh, infection which was uh, prevalent. And uh, we have seen cases uh, where we can see that basically uh, porcine sarcovirus 2 and sarcovirus 3, uh, they have been, uh, you can say, uh, co-infected uh, uh, the lot and uh, led to the mortality in case of uh, pigs. So basically it is the PCV2 uh, which is uh, causing the disease and it's not the PCV1 uh, which has ever encountered in case of uh, infection. So uh, different, uh, you can say, syndromes, uh, it has been observed like, uh, you can say, uh, associated disease uh, and uh, systemic disease uh, and uh, por uh, porcine uh, dermatitis and nephropathy syndrome, uh, which was uh, this uh, systemic disease, it was used to be known as uh, multisystemic wasting syndrome. Actually, these are the terms which uh, many, uh, you can say, workers or researchers, they use today also and many times uh, people uh, use new terms. So it has been observed that uh, also co-infection with other viruses like uh, the PRRS and the porcine parovirus, uh, uh, the animal, the pigs may be co-infected and it may then it may lead to uh, huge uh, mortality. So here we can see uh, how this uh, pigs, uh, they are in, uh, infected and uh, uh, this uh, pig is, uh, young pig is infected and also uh, after connecting the post-mortem it has been observed this is congested uh, pale liver and in utero also this, uh, uh, you can say death uh, of the pigs in utero it has occurred due to uh, this uh, infection. So differential diagnosis has to be made uh, with other, other diseases which may have uh, you can say similar sort of uh, mortality. And uh, of course lesions also in different organs because many times it is uh, causing the systemic disease. Uh, it becomes difficult at times uh, in case of paracute disease uh, to check uh, you can say lesions in case of all the organs. But, but in case of you can say acute or subacute, uh, the disease can be found in almost uh, all, uh, all organs. 
and uh, regarding the transmission uh, these uh, sarcoviruses uh, they have been uh, basically transmitted through intestinal organization of different uh, excretion and secretion of animal which includes the feces urine saliva and uh, other ocular and nasal and bronchial uh, secretion so the vertical transmission uh, in utero uh, has uh, has been reported uh, so the diagnosis is basically uh, involved uh, depending upon the different uh, uh, organs and the serological also uh, different test which has been uh, uh, performed on uh, different uh, you can say uh, the samples which uh, have been uh, submitted to the laboratories uh, but uh, here uh, the diagnosis is uh, quite effective uh, in both in case of uh, you can say serum and uh, PCR and it is also helpful so regarding the prevention and the control it becomes important that uh, by security measures uh, to prevent you can say all wild and domestic pigs it is they are uh, taken care of and they are in place and there are commercial vaccines also uh, in different countries they are being used uh, but presently uh, they are under development in case of india and uh, they are not uh, available at all places so uh, in the coming time uh, it will be helpful uh, if uh, we have a vaccine uh, for this so uh, regarding the status uh, that uh, the all the you can say north eastern states uh, where, where the pig is the main uh, animal which is being reared they have reported uh, these infections uh, different vaccine including the pcv2 3 and 4 also most recently four from not from india but from other uh, you can say countries including china and has been reported and uh, we have observed them in case of uh, UTOs. So uh, this is uh, all for uh, today, and uh, I, I'll be happy to take any questions or any queries if you have. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much, Dr. Vishal, for uh, completing the presentation in time and uh, for your very important lecture and uh, sharing your experiences. So we are thankful to you and all these diseases, they are of major concern both the farmers as well as the researchers. So I would now like the participants to directly interact with Dr. Vishal if they have any question. Sir, good afternoon, sir. This is Dr. Dishno Kumar from Tamil Nadu. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah, uh, very nice presentation. Okay. You have covered all the this is in a nice manner. Uh, regarding MCF, as you rightly pointed out, uh, we Tamil Nadu, particularly in Kaveri Delta yes. region, we have recorded so many okay. cases, so many okay. cases. And uh, as you rightly pointed out, uh, because of the uh, transhuman population of sheep, the disease was spread. So we have done a very good uh, epidemiological work with the Jew okay. mapping. Okay. And another one disease is the pork and sicko virus. Uh, we also documented in uh, Tripur district of Tamil Nadu. Okay, uh, then uh, here we are getting very good vaccines, commercial vaccine available with your commercial company. Yes, so in the farmers, we are recommending apart from classical swine fever, okay. FMD, porcine circo virus also one of the we have included as a core vaccine since it is available. Okay, so because of a lot of uh, what is a in a reproductive loss to the farmer. Oh, okay, sir. Uh, any idea about the pork and sicko virus entering into India source? Uh, actually, sir, exactly I am not uh, aware, but many a times we doubt that uh, because uh, uh, different, you can say, farmers, they do import many vaccines. Uh, many vaccines you know, not regarding, you can say, uh, especially pigs only for for uh, anything they are rearing so in case of birds also in case of cattle also uh, we have seen that uh, in case of uh, you can say semen centers people are importing vaccines for the disease uh, for the vaccines which are not available so many times mm -hmm. suspect that uh, uh, they may have encountered such cases uh, when they have purchased the animal from somewhere or vaccines may do have uh, uh, some some role if the vaccine is not effective so that that becomes important that many times uh, when the, uh, the you can say farmer or any, any stakeholder that is purchasing animal he, he may be more aware that uh, it is suffering from a particular disease so
so we we come often we come uh, we are told uh, and we are uh, told to investigate also when it is very late so it becomes a uh, difficult at that point to really pinpoint uh, as to how the disease could have uh, entered and spread so so that is yeah. one one issue yeah i want to say supplement in this junk sir so as per our every month data basically i am a every month just okay sir um so in tamil nadu tirupur district so we can able to uh, uh diagnose the disease from pcv in the farmer he himself came to our uh, veterinary university training and research center he visited the particular farm and we can able to see lot of uh, mortality till birth and uh, puberty issues then one of my classmate i think you don't know dr anbu kumar uh he is can uh, speak the in korean sicko virus in uh, habra so he used to say wherever you are going to visit the farm uh, the same litter sites but the uh, among the litter mats the body weight will be the huge difference will be there this is the main classical symptom okay. in the field level that means among the litter mats i think you don't know but uh, because of the participant i want to share my the experience with the permission uh, of our organizers so among the internet the maybe if i say to six piglets are there means one piglet weight maybe 4 kg another piglet maybe weight maybe around uh, 1 kg or 2 kg so among the internet the huge weight difference will be there then still birth then reported loss will be the common thing so this is a particular clue can able to get it so then we done uh, as geo molecular mapping so the animal the one was uh, he was purchased from uh, tichi on one place we went there when he the tichi fellow he purchased from teni he is another district then all together they purchased from the one single source so there when we can able to see some of the points setting that then we have see the literature setting that most of the pediatric human vaccines are commonly contaminated with this pcv2 okay. so once the uh, children though they got the oral vaccines maybe not not, not the pcv2 okay. but some other vaccines then they got uh, um, what is a uh, not infected but the particular virus they passed through through stools from the stools these pneumonic uh, what is a that the country picks they took a scavenge in turn it got it so like that we can able to have a very good epidemiological uh, data this is for your supplementation still the work is going on uh, because uh, what to say uh, the our uh, geo mapping forecasting is in the on the way this is my humble uh, small suggestion for submission to the uh, platform so we as you rightly pointed out vaccine is the main contaminant that to pediatric okay. human vaccines so thank you dr krishna to... kumar for sharing your views thank you yeah and dr vishal there are many thank you messages for you for very informative and nice presentation from dr muniyappan dr anus uh, dr godara dr chandan kumar and many others dr sumain dr deep shikha yeah, so the, yes the talk was thank very you. good And madam, so, excuse me, madam. Yes, yes, Dr. Tukeshwar. Yes, please. Uh, first, first of all, I would like to thank uh, Sir for the, the nice presentation. Uh, yes. Sir, uh, recently you know that African swine fever like havoc in northeast, mm-hmm. northeast, uh, particularly in Arunachal yes. Pradesh in Assam. Uh, we know there is no vaccine available in India, but uh, lots of viral drugs are available. Can we use uh, viral drugs against this uh, infection, sir? Um, I, I I don't think so, because uh, actually um, yeah, it is uh, difficult to treat the animal with antiviral drug, and I am not very much aware of uh, the, all the different drugs that are being used, because it would be more costly to treat the animal and. Uh, i don't know if there are studies that the animal would be uh, you can say potentially free from the virus if it is infected 
and because uh, pigs are also reared in farms in uh, large numbers so it, it will be difficult to uh, you can say carry out the trial in case of all the animals and, and i am not uh, very much aware whether uh, these drugs are being used uh, at any place okay thank you very much welcome madam yes thank you madam can i supplement something with your permission actually time is uh, getting over because Uh, the total okay, no is one hour, no. So later on, you can discuss with Doctor Vishal also. Though it would have been no, 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 no. but actually, no, 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 not with Vishal. No, no. Somebody they ask question, no. Yeah. For them, he got some work for that only. Okay, okay. If okay, you can complete in one minute, you please go ahead. Ah, uh, okay, ma'am. You start yeah. your stop. Stop what? Then within sixty seconds, you stop. So regarding uh, using a antiviral drug, sir. We are using uh, antiviral drug for PPR in goat, along with the some of the uh, thylosin like uh, drugs. It's giving very good results, sir. Definitely, you can try with 10 milligram per kg body weight with the acyclovir. Yes, acyclovir is the drug name. Acyclovir 10 milligram per kg body weight. We have not uh, used in the pig, but we are using in the uh, goat for PPR. It's giving very good result. We can try, sir. Thank you, madam. Okay. Thank, okay. You. Thank, thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. If anyone else is also having question, they may ask. Otherwise, we would like to wind it up. If no more questions are there, so Dr. Vishal, once again, very much uh, thank you to you okay. for sparing your valuable time and uh, uh, talking on these emerging and re-emerging diseases. Uh, the presentation was really very good. Thank you very thank much. You. thank you for the participants now we'll join on monday and uh, tomorrow you will be getting your assignment second assignment